Good morning, everyone. So great to be here. Well, today, honest to goodness, is International Hugging Day. I heard it on the news this morning, and I looked it up. Started in Michigan in 1986 as a day for us to hug, but only when we have permission from the person next to us. So <laughs> that's a sensitive topic. Yes? OK. Thank you, Jim. Complicated with the guitars. So if you're so inclined, turn to your neighbor and give him a hug on International Hugging Day. <laughs> okay, now I know I'm on a time limit here, so <laughs> it's the part that gets me the most nervous, trying to fit everything in that I want to say and I want to sing. So nice to be here. I swear this is one of the friendliest places ever, and the feeling that I get when I stand up here is just un unsurmountable. Um, I also know some of you. Gay Giles and I used to play basketball together for Pearson High School. <laughs> And Gay was amazing. I, I always kid her that I was better than her, but there was un, she was unbelievable, unbelievable. And my sister Sue is here, and I know Karen and folks, and Robert and folks from Sag Harbor, and just so nice to feel the warmth of your presence here today. So this topic is law, and I brought along my trusty guitar to help me address it and sing along. So I'm going to start, and I'm going to ask you any song that you might know, please join in. And we're going to start with... Breaking rocks in the hot sun, I fought the law and the law won. I fought the law and the law won. I needed money cause I had none. I fought the law and the law won. I fought the law and the law won. So law is a topic near and dear to our hearts. There are all sorts of laws that we're surrounded by, laws and rules that we need to follow to maintain order and help the world run smoothly. Law was often a topic of conversation in our house as my husband was on the Sag Harbor Police Force for nearly 40 years. <laughs> and for 15 of those years, he was the chief. Sometimes I'm just amazed that the world runs as smoothly as it does. Right? We generally drive on the correct side of the road. We stop at red lights and stop signs. We pay for things that we pick up in the store. Think of what it would be like if we didn't have those laws. Maybe the most pertinent to us today are the 12 universal laws that seem to fit into the philosophy of new, for, new thought quite well. The Dalai Lama said, there's no need for temples, no need for complicated philosophies, my brain and my heart are my temples. My philosophy is kindness. So with our hearts and with our heads, these 12 laws create and manifest in the world we live. They reveal the truth that everything, everything is energy. As you may know, energy cannot be created or destroyed, but it can be influenced. It can change forms. This, these laws help us to understand how energy and everything in the world really works. Well, what are the 12 universal laws, you might ask? Many of, the, many of us are familiar with some of them. Universal laws are principles, are fundamental laws of mind and spirit. They are all interrelated and they operate on all levels, physical, mental, and spiritual. They are eternal, universal, and absolute. You can rely on these principles to operate everywhere, all of the time. It is human nature that we tend to believe mostly in just the things we can see, feel, taste, hear, or touch, while at times we doubt the things that are beyond our perception. Yet these universal laws influence our everyday lives, and we cannot change that. When you think of these universal laws, they are somewhat similar to the roots of the tree buried underground. 
Our eyes cannot see them, yet the roots are so important to the tree because without roots, a tree cannot stand. And universal laws are like that. When we choose to ignore the natural laws of the universe, it is believed that we may experience struggle, resistance, unfulfilled destiny, pain, lack of direction, and more. These universal laws of nature don't belong to any one religion or a concrete spiritual tradition or a way. Nevertheless, they apply to everybody and everything like the laws of nature, like laws of physics, chemistry, or astronomy. The universal laws lie in the nature of the universe. They were created together with the universe by the universal consciousness, called also God, the absolute great spirit, and have been passed through generations through various spiritual teachers. We're gonna take a short tour of these 12 universal laws now. There are some variations on the naming and the order of these laws. I've tried to think of a song to help introduce just about each one. In the future, when you hear one of these songs, perhaps you'll be reminded of the universal laws. So universal law number one, the law of one or divine oneness. One love, one heart, let's get together and feel all right. Hear the children crying, one love, one heart, they give thanks and praise to the Lord and I will feel all right. Let's get together and feel all right. The law of divine oneness tells us that we live in a world where everything is connected to everything else. Everything we do, everything we say, and everything we think and believe affects others and the universe around us. Universal law number two, the law of vibration. I'm picking up good vibrations. She's giving me excitations. I'm picking up good vibrations. She's giving me good vibration. Good, 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 good vibration. Good, 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 good vibration. Nice singing, everybody. This universal law states that everything in the universe moves, vibrates, and travels in circular patterns. Science has discovered that underlying all forms of matter, there is an underlying energy of vibration. This is not a metaphysical theory, but it is a scientific fact. Everything in the universe is vibrating, from the atom, the molecule, to a tree or a mountain. There is a vibration in every living thing. The rate of vibration determines its form. Slow vibration manifests as a rock. Fast vibration registers as the wind. Very high vibrations register as sound and music. The variation is endless. Most importantly, thoughts and feelings are vibrations. Universal law number three. I bet you can guess. It's a law of rhythm. What song is coming next? <laughs> I've got rhythm. I've got music. I've got my God. Who could ask for anything more? <laughs> this universal law states that everything vibrates and moves to certain rhythms. These rhythms establish the seasons, the cycles, the stages of development and patterns. Each cycle reflects the regularity of God's universe. The next law is law number four, the law of cause and effect. So what's so funny is when I was leaving this morning, I asked Alexa to play music for my dogs. And I asked her, could you play the lullaby station, Alexa? And she put on, and this song came on. So I thought, wow, that's, <laughs> that's the energy of the universe. 
When you wish upon a star Makes no difference who you are Anything your heart desires Will come to you This law states that nothing happens by chance. Every action has a reaction or a consequence, and we reap what we have sown. This law is impartial, whether your action is positive or negative. So we become responsible for the quality of our own lives, our thoughts, our emotions, and our relationships. Your choices become your destiny. So we should choose wisely. Excuse me. The next one is the law of attraction. Listen, do oh, do you want to know a secret? Do oh, do you promise not to tell? Ooh, <laughs> Keep on going. <laughs> this universal law got a lot of attention when The Secret, a best-selling 2006 self-help book by Rhonda Burns, came out. This universal law is like attracts like. So our thoughts, feelings, words, and actions produce energies which in turn attract like energies. Negative attract negative, and positive attract positive. The key to this law is focusing your attention on what you want to attract. Law number six, the law of gratitude. This is one of the songs I wrote, actually. It's an attitude of gratitude, a way of saying thanks for all the wonders of the universe a way of saying thanks. Be thankful, count your blessings. Gratitude is important because it generates an extremely positive vibration. It connects us with God. The grateful mind is constantly fixed upon the best. Therefore, it will receive the best. Universal law number seven is the law of compensation. What goes up must come down. Spinning wheel, I got to go round. Talking about your troubles, it's a crying sin. Ride the painted pony, let the spinning wheel spin. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> this universal law states for every action, there must be a reaction. What goes around, comes around. This is apparent when applied to blessings and the issues of abundance. Say we give of our time freely to charity or make a generous donation. It might not happen immediately, but somewhere down the line, good things will come your way. Law number eight, the law of increase. I'm not sure you know this song, but we used to sing it at morning program. Love grows one by one, two by two, and four by four. Love grows round like a circle and comes back knocking at your front door. This law states that the spirit of your action multiplies the result. Check your purpose, sincerity, and willingness to ensure multiplication by this law. The key is application. Apply whatever you want to your thoughts, words, and actions. It will grow and return to you as the fruits of your efforts. Law number nine. We're getting there. <laughs> this is called the law of perpetual transmutation. Bring Bring me a higher love. Bring me a higher love. Bring me a higher love. Where this 
higher love I've been thinking of. This universal law states that energy never dies, it simply transforms. Higher vibrations consume and transform lower ones. Therefore, we have the power to change the conditions in our lives by learning how to utilize our thoughts and emotions, our energy. Law number 10 is the law of polarity. You say yes, I say no. You say stop, and I say go, go, go. Oh no, you say goodbye, and I say hello. Hello, hello, I don't know why you say goodbye, I say hello. Hello, hello, I don't know why you say goodbye, I say hello. <laughs> it took me some time to think of these songs. <laughs> this universal law states that everything is on a continuum and has an opposite. It states that anything can be split into two complete opposites and that each of these polar elements contains the potentiality of the other. A practical application of this law is that we can suppress and transform undesirable thoughts by concentrating on the opposite. Okay, these two laws I didn't come up with song, so I figured I'd be getting that sign. So. <laughs> The law of correspondence. The law of correspondence basically puts us in the driver's seat of our own lives. Our outer world is a direct reflection of our inner world. Therefore, we need to accept responsibility of our own lives. And number 12, last but not least, is the law of relativity. Relativity is the relationship of all things understood by the person relating to it. It also depends on your perspective. When we shift our perspective, our viewpoint shifts. The law teaches us to put everything into its proper perspective. No matter how bad we perceive our situation to be, there is always someone who is in a worse position. It is all relative. Often when you change your perspective, you change your mind, and that may just change your life. What is important is that we understand that all of these laws do exist, and should you choose to align and harmonize with them in a conscious and intentional way, you'll in essence flow with and learn to be even grateful for each event, condition, and circumstance you encounter as the various aspects of your life unfold. There is no secret at all Never has there been and never will there be. It's simply a matter of choice, most specifically your choice, our choice. There are a large and ever-growing number of people in the world who are waking up and becoming aware of these universal laws, yet it's still the vast majority who believe that life just happens as it will. They perceive that the various events, conditions, and circumstances they experience in life are based on a series of random yeses and noes. Regardless of how bad they might perceive them to be or are just a random series of occurrences altogether, fully believing that there's no definitive purpose or underlying reason why these things happen as they do. This magnificent order allows us predictability and helps us prevent chaos. Whether we believe so or not, we are the creators of our own lives. Our thoughts become our beliefs, which govern our choices. These, in turn, determine our actions and ultimately our destiny. Well, just the other day, and this is a true story, I was heading over to sing at the senior center. <clears throat> and when I got there, I unpacked my stuff and suddenly realized I had forgotten my binder of songs. So back home I went. And I said that I'd be back in 10 minutes. I drove down the Bridgehampton Turnpike, ran into my house, got my binder, and ran back out to my car. And as I was looking in my car, I noticed something odd on the floor of the driver's seat. And I looked down to see hundreds of eaten bird seeds on the floor of my car. 
some visitors must have ha found their way into the bag of food that I bring to feed the birds at Morton Wildlife. Now, I know we all have our own fears, and I'll tell you that mine <laughs> is not so much the mouse itself, but <laughs> the haint of virus that it carries. If I was a little closer, I would have walked back to the senior center. It took all my courage to hop back into that car with my binder and head back up the turnpike. I was convinced I heard the pitter-patter of little feet the whole way. <laughs> but I'm sure that must have been just my imagination. Ah, another song. <laughs> we had lots of fun singing, and I drove back home and began to vacuum out my car and found seeds throughout the vehicle. Ugh. Well, next I had to jump back into the car and drive to town for a hairdressing appointment. I parked on Main Street, knowing I had to pick up a couple of groceries after my appointment. So I finished with my hair, ran to provisions to get some lunch to go, and then to the IGA. I got back into my car to head home, and my car would not start. <laughs> my husband's out of town, so I called my brother, and he was unable to get it started with his jump box, and so we called AAA. And they said they'd be there within an hour, and, if, and they would call me. I gave them my cell phone number. The minute my brother pulled away, rushing to go to a meeting he had, my cell phone died. <laughs> <laughs> and honestly, my cell phone never dies. I was there in the cold, no heat, no fork to eat my provisions food. I started to eat my chicken tostados like a taco. <laughs> And I looked in my glove box to find napkins. And there, inside my glove box, was shredded tissues <laughs> created by my small intruder. So AAA shows up. They start my car, and I head home with visions of Clorox wipes dancing in my head. My sister follows me home and comes in to try to make transportation arrangements for her 20-year-old son who is on a tour of Europe and has left his passport under his pillow in a youth hostel in San Sebastian, Spain. He has to travel hundreds of miles on his own to try to get it. My niece decides to stop over on her way from home from work to help us with travel arrangements, and she's pulled over by a police officer. <laughs> for being on her cell phone. <laughs> this all happened on Thursday. <laughs> and I was so very happy when I woke up to a new day on Friday. Now some would say, sometimes days are just like that. But I can't help but wonder if that wasn't about one of the universal laws, getting out of whack. Was it cause and effect? Was it relativity? or a bit of bad karma mixed in. Knowing, understanding, and aligning with the laws of the universe can help us become conscious and intentional about what we create. We are empowered to create our own reality by design and not by default. Because everything that God put in place in this universe works with you and for you. I don't think it's easy, and I don't imagine we can follow these laws perfectly. But I think these universal laws lay out a path for us to follow and an intention for us to set for our lives. And in the great evolution of consciousness, the positive energy that we create in this universe can only help us move towards world peace and fully lived lives. And I just want to end with singing. Amen. Amen.